coming in here, going to this terminal of nothing, connected to this little wire here. This little wire travels up, feeds power to the clock. The clock, other leg of the clock motor is this black wire here. Here, here, here. Ties to this B minus point that powers the clock continuously. Back comes the switched wire, and that's this one here. This is where things get weird. It comes back to terminal number six. Terminal number six is the center tap of the heater on the rectifier tube. So, uh, so the power is being fed to the center tap. plate terminal and uh, one heater terminal right here. They're soldered together with nothing attached to them. <laughs> and then uh, this is the other heater terminal. So heater, heater, plate, center tap. Well, it seems like an easy thing. If, if you know, forgetting how this is wired and not worrying about it, that's probably a good idea. If I just simply run a wire from here, just do the same thing. These two wires are going to a switch, so I'll just run two wires from these two terminals out the back of the radio to a switch on the back. But this, I've got to have it correct at this point. That means I can actually cut away this wire and run the two. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut away this wire. It's got to be this way. I, I'm, I'm thinking again about the circuitry and wondering. Stop wondering. Just do it. Just do the thing. Just do the thing. Okay, I'm going to leave that wire hanging there in case the thing I'm doing isn't the right thing to do. it around a little bit. So now I want to bring a uh, wire that's going to carry 120 volts out to here. I need I need some nice let me let me get all the parts I need to do this together here. Okay, so I got a nice piece of wire here. It's gonna do a nice job but just before I turned the camera on, I was trying to figure out how I was going to route it from here to back here, and I hoped to go through these existing holes in the back apron, but there's no way the wire will fit. I looked at other holes, my wire's just not quite long enough to travel. I don't really want it traveling all over the radio anyway. So I'm going to have to drill out, I really, I don't really want to do it, I'm going to have to drill out one of these holes, these little tiny holes, you can see one there. The other one's just out of view. Uh, I gotta drill it just a little bit bigger to push this through. Prior, then I'm going to, uh, here's the switch I'm gonna use. I'm gonna put that on there, but you know, there's 120 volts sitting right there, and a person could uh, conceivably re reach, you know, reach around behind here somehow. Just basically, you don't want that kind of voltage exposed. So I'm going to put on a shrink shrink tube. Try to do a neat job connecting those, and then shrink the tube up over them. That's my scam. That's my whole plan. There it is. Whole thing. Drill out a hole first. Hmm. Okay, you do it. Just because I don't want to do it doesn't mean I can't do it. Okay, ah, it's a beautiful sunny day outside. Cool, it's minus 10. Beautiful day. Okay, so we're going to try drilling through here into there. Now, since there's a good chance I'm going to puncture this little transformer here, I don't want you to miss that exciting moment. in 
position here. Okay, hold your ears. The whole radio may go flying if it, if if the bit grabs the chassis. I haven't got much holding this down here, you know. I'm trying to hold too many things at once. Hope it doesn't happen. Here we go. Oh, spinning in the chuck. I got chuck problems now. One thing I will never do is stick that in there while this thing's plugged in. That's how you get hurt bad in a number of ways. I'm surprised. I thought I. I... Oh, that's a lot tighter. Okay, I thought I got it tight. You know, in these chucks, as strange as it might seem, it makes sense to put the tool into each thing and try to turn it each time. If you think hard about it, you'll realize why that might be. But just doing it in one spot, often not enough. Oh yes, I want to see. The, I want to miss the moment now where I blow through the transformer. Ooh. Well, I did not put a hole in the transformer. That's good, because I have in the past. <laughs> You've been a long-time subscriber. You, you know, in this exact same scenario, I blew a hole. I destroyed a very particular coil in a radio. I had to buy another radio of the same sort to get the, the specific coil out of it. <laughs> yeah, so twice shy, isn't that what they say? So now I've got a nice hole here. Very little metal de uh, debris. Which is good. Let's see if we can vacuum it up here. Believe it or not, that little vacuum seemed to do it. But I'm also going to do a, a special dumping action here. That's the dumping action. Very special. Where are we at now? Okay, so now we're getting close to doing the switch on the wire. attached to the switch. I really don't want much wire exposed. Little teeny, teeny holes in there. Maybe we can get this loop through the holes. these guys up in hopes they will fit fit through the tiny holes. way the switch is working we'll just hook up to the center in one end and then I can just put the switch the way I want I want it to be up is on ultimately yeah it'll go right through those holes as long as I don't put too much solder on them
This uh, statistician I was uh, watching his video on the world's population, he also showed how be another 30, 40 years before the world gets to 11 billion and stabilizes, um, the distribution of the population around the world. African, Asian, European, North American, that kind of stuff. It's very, very interesting and uh, very, uh, very encouraging compared to what you usually hear about this kind of stuff, which is, you know, populations out of control. He, one of the points he made is, yeah, even if the population was out of control, which he says it isn't really, what are you going to do about it? You can see the policy uh, China tried with the one child thing. You know, that's really hard on people. Um, what are you on this planet for anyway? For many people, it's to have children, it's to have a family. You take that away? What are you taking away? You're taking away the reason for being, for crying out loud, for a lot of people. I think in the long run, China discovered that that policy is not not so good, and you know it's not so necessary. Uh, maybe when they first instituted it, uh, Chinese families were large. What this guy said about that is, uh, people have you know ten children, twelve children, because they expect a number of their children to die, and it's true the death rate in the poor countries with children is unfortunately very high, and so parents realize that in their old age they will need children to take care of them. That's the way the world works. And uh, so you better have a lot. It's a simple economic decision. It's not, it's not done for any other reason. Uh, once people become reassured that in their old age they will be taken care of, maybe by society generally, you know, old folks homes and nursing homes and stuff like that. Once once they have the feeling that they don't need all these children, they don't have them anymore. And that's what's happening all over the world. Sure, when I was a kid, uh, and you know, I could be wrong in this, but as an example, I certainly was under the impression that uh, families in India were huge and that this was part of the problem in the world for population which I guess in a sense it is, but the real problem is uh, lack of economic security generates large families. Um, so that economic uh, insecurity is far less in the world now than it was, far less. And children don't die. Well, they still do in some parts of the world at, at extraordinary rates. But, uh, you know, that's all getting better all the time. So these are, these are the things we should be thinking about. But instead, you know, the world has, through its own actions, generated huge waves of people fleeing the countries they live in, forced to flee, And uh, this has generated a typical backlash. And then politicians who seize, seize the situation and see that they can make it work for them. And they begin to stoke it. So what I mean by that is people are a little afraid of other people. Um, politicians, some politicians can see that as an advantage. Now what's going to hold this here? Either it's going to shrink down onto this surface and grab it. That's quite possible. Or I've got to do something because I don't think it's going to shrink enough to grab it here. I don't want this sliding back and exposing those terminals. Even this terminal is a bit of a problem, isn't it? 
depends how I hook this wire inside the radio. Switch is open, I want this terminal to be the live one and this one to be the dead one. Otherwise, if this is the live one, the switch is open here, it's closed there, and that terminal becomes live. So the guy turns the radio off, goes, hey, that'll be safe, reaches around the back, yahoo! So now they got a shrink sleeve all the way over that, or I've got to cut this away. Probably cutting it away is a better move. Cut it away as much as I can, anyway. I mean, you shouldn't be reaching around the back of a radio without looking first. See what happens when I do this. Gone. That's good. That'll do it. So now, um, I think I can actually install this at this point. Install it loosely because I don't know which way is on it. I'm not sure which way's on and off. I'm going to do it with two lock washers. I never really thought about just how much clearance there. Yeah, there's enough. Shrink sleeve. I got to do the shrink sleeve at this point before I before I go any further. this. kind of the shape I wanted it to get to. Oop, cooking my camera again. Just don't think it will actually come all the way down and grab that wire. I think 
that's got to do it right there. I think I can get it much more shrunk. This wire through the hole, which I never checked to make sure it was big enough. This hole that turns out not to be big enough. It's okay. Uh, you might say, hey man, that's a sharp hole there, cutting on a power wire. You probably have said that. I'm saying it too. That clearance in here isn't the best. The best. They have way too much shrink sleeve. Huh. What about shoving that shrink sleeve through the hole? I don't think it's going to work. So I'm just going to kind of leave it like this. And when the radio's finished, if there's a problem here with this dimension, I'll just bend these wires around to kind of tuck it up. I think that'll work. This just runs down the side, down to here. Thank God it's long enough. Just like that. different camera here. So the length is right in here where I'm pinching it. I would do it right there. Hope that doesn't. Always cut it longer if we need to. Pull it back. One of these is going to be shortened in the end. Now what about that uh, hot wire thing I was mumbling about? You know, it depends upon a couple things. Which way, which way the radio is plugged in? Is it on or off? I don't think I can. Pick a polarity for these wires that is going to make any significant impact on the danger of this switch, back at this switch. Danger is pretty low now. I think that's too short. So this will be the long one. Whew. Soldering iron has an automatic off after 15 minutes or so. Still on. Where am I going with this? Here. <laughs> Doesn't look like any. This 
terminal right here. When the uh, solder melted, the tinning for the wire, when it melted, the uh, all that's left is the strength of the copper to hold the wire in place, and there's no strength. So as soon as I melted it, the wire just just pulled itself away. Let's try again. goes there. You know, if this wasn't a clock radio, you could probably just say, ah, just plug it in when you want to play it, because most of the time it's just sitting on the shelf. It may not even be plugged in on the shelf. So take it off the shelf, plug it in, enjoy it. Who cares if the switch works? But since it has a clock, you'd kind of like to have the clock operate, I would think. Doing that right? Yeah. stripped a lot of wires for all the goofy things I was doing and uh, I did not really have any tools when I was a kid. Just some clunky tools. I used to strip wire by uh, uh, laying it on my finger like this. And then I take a knife and go skin it off like that and hope I don't chop the end of my finger off. That was my that's what I figured out on my own. <laughs> not turn to the internet. This one's not tinned, so I have a chance of strands going wild. Hey, that wouldn't be too good, would it? Now, that would liven the chassis up. And uh, depending upon which way the plug was, maybe not. I'd have to think about that. That's a pretty messy operation here. Um, this accidentally livened up the chassis. Would the fuse blow when I plugged it in? think so. Because all that's connecting the other side of the chassis is this capacitor I put in. I can't imagine there's a fault current capability there. And 
this, this has not worked out. This has not worked out. I'm just going to end up with a strand I can't see. And then she's going to blow up. Blow up the radio. So we'll tin it here. get the heart valve in there soon. Yeah, I'm doing this with stiff wires and stiff this and stiff that. Imagine doing this with squishy, gushy stuff like surgeons do. Squishy, gooey stuff. soldered. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, some thoughts that run through my head I don't share with you guys, by the way. Fleeting, momentary, stupid thoughts. There we go. <laughs> the other stupid thoughts I do share, so... of useless old wire out of there. exactly where I kind of wanted it to go and it's all because of this this is a problem over here shrink sleeve it's way too long it should be should be way back here now I've got the wire soldered in there there's not a lot of play around opportunity here anymore. pliers. Yeah, okay, that gave me the wire I need to lay 
lay this in the way I want it. Just kind of tucked down in behind here. I'm assuming laying it up tight to the chassis is a good idea. place. Good show. I think so. Who's gonna who's who's gonna throw that switch? <laughs> Find my neighbor and bring him over. Go in that room, throw that little switch there and see what happens. in the radio to really... Now wait a minute. This big hole here. This big hole. This should be centered in the hole. You can see it isn't. So when it's... When it's wait a minute. Of course it's screwed in tight here. Ah. Okay, what I'm muttering about is that the, the, the switch and the hole, they don't actually they don't actually line up 100%. So, shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. Just keep saying that. Shouldn't be a problem. Should we test this guy again? Of course. We have to. I pulled some of the shrink has been pulled off the switch terminal there, but maybe I can push it back up later. Shrink it more. Maybe I can shrink it more. I don't know. Okay, so I think it's off now. Good show. Put the uh, tuning knob on. It's off here. Ah. Oh, I see what's going on. I keep thinking you're looking at it through this camera here. So it's off here. And I think it's off on the back switch. So I, think I turn this puppy on. Again, if there's a problem, my dim lights are going to save me. This elbow there that you never know exactly what motion's gonna uh, right on a little bump. Yow! That's probably from painting. I don't know, I don't know what it's from. I don't play tennis. Okay, everything's ready to go. Apply power. Okay, there's a psychological effect here, which got me. See if it'll get you too. See the uh, motion of the second hand? I'm going to turn the power off. Okay, it's not moving. Now, you're going to hear the click when I turn the power on. You tell me if this is delayed or not. Okay, so it didn't look delayed to me. <laughs> Bad news is, the radio's come on. But that could be because I just got the switch mi mixed around. Let's see. Hey! Well, it's still going? Still going! Hey! <laughs> ah, another, another masterful job done here. Okay. Maybe it wasn't so masterful. <laughs> Success is in hand. I will now put the radio back together. See what we got this time. Okay, I think we've reached the end here. The final test. So let me power this up. There goes the second hand. You know, I didn't explain what I was <laughs> talking about before, but the the second hand, it, it, when when something is not moving and then begins motion your brain will delay your perception of the start of the motion. 
And uh, one of the ways you can see this is by looking at the second hand on a clock. And usually when you first look at it, it appears to not be moving. So check it out, try it on your, especially this kind, that, that, that tick, the tick. You know, you watch the second hand and you first look at it, it looks like it hangs on a little extra too long. It's just a perceptive thing. Human beings, what fools we are. Okay, so clock is working. No radio coming. Because it switches in the off position. I will now switch it. Switch. We will wait patiently. The volume. I still have the uh, power set low here. But in fact, it's running at 115 volts. That's that's perfectly fine. So any moment now. Ha, always a relief. Tuber. You know, I never did the IF or anything. Who cares? A radio like this, the IF is probably tuned fine. She works. Directional as expected. And I will now switch off the radio. <laughs> How exciting turning things off. The hey, last thing we got to do is check these capacitors I took out and see if that was really a, an exercise in value or not. These are all fairly large capacitors as capacitors go. we're going to do is we're going to apply high voltage, DC high voltage to it and uh, this instrument will tell us if it leaks through it. Okay, it will tell us by watching the eye here. So to watch the eye, keep your eye, your eye on the eye. business here, getting the camera to cooperate. Well, it's good enough there, I think. But you can see the eye is open. So I'm going to flip the switch here to leakage. It's going to apply the voltage on the capacitor, 25 volts to start. This eye should pop closed during the charging. 
take just a moment and then open up just like this. Look at that. That just went like a bullet. It's 150, 150 volts, 250. So there's no leakage whatsoever in this capacitor. So now we'll measure its capacitance. 0.047 is what it's claiming. So this goes to 0 0.5. 0.047.01. So this is the right range. Somewhere in here, the eye will pop open. Oh, did you see that right there? I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it on camera. It's not actually popping open all the way. It's reacting in this area here, though. So this would be on the uh, 0 0.001. That's the second scale, and 0 0.005, that's where it should be. So I'm not reading correct on this, and it's also the fact that the eye is not popping open at the right point. Yeah, maybe I got this wrong. instrument when you get down towards the end of the scale here it's, it's, it gets kind of wonky. So this goes up to 0 0.005 but this is a 0 0.05 so I don't know. So, I, so this is suggesting this capacitor is leaky because that's what happens there. It doesn't quite open. But yet on the voltage test it didn't show leaky at all. That's kind of weird. what to make of that. Okay, now here's the same size capacitor. This is a, a really in good shape. So before trying the leakage test, since we're right here, let's test it right on here. Again, this is a very same effect. It's not really popping open. I know you can't see it on the video, but it's right in the same spot. Okay, so we'll do this on the leakage test. And you can see it's it's open. Beautiful. 250 volts. Nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with this capacitor except it's not reading quite the way. 0.05. Let me get a real new 0.05. Let's just convince myself that this instrument's working. It's brand new. doing the high voltage thing, it's fine. This is what I want to try. See it, see it open there? Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. So that's opening. There's the 0 0.05, right there. So it's just right on. This one's testing right on. It also kind of proves the instrument works. Why these others were testing up here? 0.05s also. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of, I've never seen quite that outcome. Okay, let's try another one. This one's a little more beat up. This one's from England. It's England versus the United States in the capacitor test off. This is a point, point zero four seven. It's another one. It's the same size again. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay, getting the same deal up here, and the eye is being affected, but it's not really opening. Really curious. Okay, 25 volts. Open your eye wide. Oh, now this one, at 250 volts, the eye doesn't pop all the way open. That indicates a leakage. It's really hard to see in there, isn't it? Let's see what happens. Maybe that's a little better. Yeah, you can see now it stays. In. So this guy's got a bit of a leakage to him. But you know what? 
if you were if you'd spent your life inside a tin can. Point zero two. This means if you spent your life inside a tin can, you'd probably have some leakage problems too. Okay, leakage test. Put it on twenty-five. Better than the last one. Let me give it a moment. When I let go of this control, it puts a short across here that bleeds off any charge on the capacitor. Just, just got to give it a little bit. You got to give it more time than you would imagine. Okay, let's test this guy. Point. Point zero two. Point, so it's going to be in this range somewhere. Again, I can see an effect on the eye, but it's not opening at all. And it's reading around the point one. When these things are leaky, I think this tester tends to read them high. The fun isn't over. Let's, let's go from the old style tester to the latest latest kind, 0.02. 86 nanofarads, so that's 0.08. V loss 11 percent. That sounds bad. Whatever that means. I don't even know what that means. So I'm much more comfortable with the old style tester because I, I gotta, I gotta, uh, you know, I understand what leakage is and I understand how that can mess up a radio. So this one says it's uh, 140 nanofarads. That'd be a 0 0.1, 0 0.15. It's not a 0.15, of course, it's a uh, 0.05. So the reading is way off. ESR, 18 ohms. That's, I mean, I'm really, how, how bad off can you be changing these other than spending time and effort and a wee bit of money? Lucky none of those were charged up or I'd be jumping. Jump in. Okay, that's it. I think that's the story for the Sylvania radio. The story told. So, what? Uh, okay, <laughs> the clock, clock's not going. The clock's not going because I unplugged it. Good. Okay, I wonder what's next. What will be next in my shop? Thanks so much for watching this series. And we'll see you with something different here.